Hey everybody, Pastor Bill here. This is Fixing Things. And today, we're gonna bleed the brakes on my F600 Mihal truck. Stick around and watch how I did it. So today we're gonna bleed the brakes on the U-Haul truck, the Mihal truck. And I'm gonna do it different than I've ever done it before. Usually when I do brakes, I have someone with me or I'll do the gravity fed. And today we're gonna to use the vacuum mat. Vac vacuum, vacuum method. And we're gonna be using the, the Mighty Vac vacuum pump. Kind of looks like something else, but it's got all kinds of attachments on here. So we'll break this open and see what it's got in it. Like I said, I ain't, I ain't never used one of these before. Uh, I know that you uh, you can use things even like a spray bottle. I've seen that done. Uh, take a, the end out of a spray bottle and just stick the hose into it and start pumping until the stuff comes out of it. And when you don't see no more bubbles no more, you're done. Tighten it up and go. Um, but it's raining now, so I'm not so sure if I'm going to do it right now. I know it's supposed to be clear tomorrow. We'll see. If, it, if it, it's only light raining, so yeah, the weatherman. All right, let's see what's in this kit. I already got the staples out of it. All right, so it's got a pretty cool pump looking thingy. Got a little jug with some end hoses on it. Got a little hose here, a little hose there. Here a hose, there a hose. Everywhere a hose, hose. So it says two pump. And that must be. Okay. Manuel. I think for our purposes, all we're gonna do is draw all the fluid through it, get all the air bubbles out of it. Yeah, it's raining. One of the things they say is since the brake fluid absorbs um, moisture, is don't get moisture in it and the air is full of moisture i may do this video tomorrow last thing i want to do is contaminate my brand new brake system with water and it's raining all right it's the next day out here and it's still kind of chilly, but it ain't raining. I, I was afraid that water was gonna drip off the edge of the roof and get introduced into the uh, master cylinder and I just didn't want that to happen. So today we're gonna, we're gonna bleed the brakes on this truck. A uh, few things we gotta do first. And then also I gotta explain some stuff because I want, I want everyone to know that you can do this stuff yourself. It's not that hard. It's actually fairly simple. Uh, but there is some practices you need to, to know about what you're doing and why you're doing it. And uh, one of the things I wanted to talk about is what they call a proportioning valve. It's actually not a proportioning valve. It's actually a, a safety switch is what it is. And when, when one side loses pressure, uh, it all it does is throws the, uh, a switch and turns an idiot light on your, your dash. And it reduces the pressure on uh, on your brakes. So you don't have 
uh, brakes locked up, but it's not really a proportioning valve. Proportioning valve is something different that came along back in the racing industry and you can dial them in. There's no dialing to these. So what this is designed to do is uh, if your front brakes lock up, uh, your, your car is gonna, or car, truck, or whatever you're doing is going to start uh, spinning out of control. The back, back, back of your vehicle is gonna wanna come forward, right? So what that does is allows the back brakes not to do that, right? Uh, if your back brakes lock up, they just stay tracking forward, right? But if your front brakes lock up, right? Same thing on a motorcycle. You grab your motorcycle front brake and you stop, even though 75% of your braking's in your front. Uh, uh, you don't want the front brakes to lock up. So that's all it does. It's like your first, your, it's designed like back in the 19, uh, late 50s, maybe early 60s. And it's, it's the first attempt of any lock brakes is what it is. And they, it came with the name proportioning valve. Proportioning valve actually comes from the racing industry. It's not a proportioning valve, but it just stuck. Okay. All right. So this system here was actually designed for um, uh, disc brakes. And disc brakes are actually not as, uh, um, I don't know what you would say. They're not, they're not as, uh, I'm not going to say they're not as good. Uh, they're just as good, but they're not as efficient as, uh, uh, as drum, drum brakes are the most efficient because you're putting the pressure outwards against the drum where on a disc brakes, you're trying to clamp something that's sliding between it, which makes an extreme amount of heat. Now the, the, the disc brakes are able to dissipate the heat real fast. Um, usually around 250 PSI of pressure and, and the brakes will lock up where you may get up to a couple thousand PSI on a, uh, ones for a um, disc brakes. So with my case, I'm working with bigger equipment. This is the one that they said that needs to be used. It's a, it's a disc brake system for filling up big calipers on multiple calipers on a, on a, a truck. And since this is a commercial truck, X650, this is or 600, they said this one will work fine because you'll, you're, you're not going to need that extra pressure. You're going to be lighter footed and you won't need the big giant uh, vacuum things. They said this one works better for my application. Uh, so all you guys out there that's working on your F600s, this is the brake system if you want to replace your old Hydrovac system. It's designed for uh, both, both reservoirs are the same. They're not like one is the front, one is the back. All right, both reservoirs are the same, so you don't have to worry about that. They both put out the same pressure because you're working with um, uh, drum brakes in the back and drum brakes in the front. Uh, so that's why when you had that, the system that was on here before was a single circuit system. Now we're going with the dual circuit system and it should be safer because if I lose pressure in one of the systems, I still got the other system to do it. Plus it'll have an idiot light to let me know that one of the systems is, is, uh, failing. Uh, I'm not worried about that. Uh, I'm more worried, I'm not worried about anything. We're gonna bleed these brakes, get these things going. All right, so first thing I wanna do is I wanna double check all my uh, connections and make sure they're tight so we don't get no air in the lines. Next thing we're gonna do, next thing we're gonna do is uh, uh, we're not going to bleed the master cylinder, okay? And I'll tell you the reason why. We're not gonna bleed the master cylinder for the simple fact that it's a brand new system from front to rear, right? Uh, you bleed the master cylinder when you are putting the master cylinder on old brake lines and you don't wanna introduce more air, trapped air, but we're using the vacuum method and we're gonna be pulling everything through. So it, it doesn't make a difference. There's already air in all the lines. It's not gonna hurt anything. 
right? It's common sense, common sense. So we're gonna pull the, the hydraulic fluid through. All right, that being said, let's talk about the, I never used one of these things, but I understand the operating. So you can't just open the, the, the valve on, the, on your uh, thing and just start pumping because you want to get these up to a certain uh, uh, vacuum pressure, right? Before you release the valve. Kind of similar as what you're doing with the pedal, except it's in, it's in reverse, right? So uh, if you want to suck the air and suck everything through that line, you want to have the, the most vac vacuum on your gauge as possible. So you pump up the pump, right? And then release shut pump up the pump release shut off pump up the pump <laughs> it's similar to what you do push the brake right open the valve right shut the valve off release the brake because you don't want to really put air back into it so when you're pumping the pump just pumping the pump yeah you're trying to you're you're making suction on the on a thing but you're not getting enough pressure you got to get the pressure because that's what's drawing that fluid through there sucking the air if there's any bubbles it's sucking it through it's not allowing the air to, the to stay in the spot you want to suck that suck it right through there right so let's get with it First thing I want to do is make sure all my lines are tight because I don't want to be sucking air into the lines as we're trying to bleed them. I've had this stuff off two or three times. And see, that one was loose. This one was loose. All right, now that we have uh, all the um, brake lines, I've double checked them, everything's tight. All the wheel cylinders, all the blocks are tight. Um, all my connections, and good thing, because these were loose. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and top off the uh, master cylinder <laughs> with brake fluid. So we're using dot three brake fluid. That's what's required for the older style. Now, I'm using dot three because that's what everyone says to use. Uh, and not to be saying anything about dot five or dot three and a half, four or whatever. Uh, I would rather use hydraulic fluid. But the DOT on the label is on there for a reason, right? That it's the only one that's approved. Like when you have lights, they got a DOT. When you get a motorcycle helmet, it has to have DOT on it. It's the approved fluid for your vehicle. So for your older vehicles, it's gonna be DOT3. So I'm using DOT3, but I'm not a fan of it. I would rather be using hydraulic fluid for the simple fact that hydraulic fluid is oil and oil doesn't rust. Uh, and uh, brake fluid is highly caustic. It, it, it'll take the paint right off your car. And if moisture is introduced into your lines, it promotes rust. 
it's why your brake fluid changes color because you get moisture in your line and it causes the inside of your steel brake lines to rust. So let's top it off. So brake fluid absorbs moisture. And on your damp days and everything else, you're doing your brakes. Put your uh, cap, at least put it back over top of it. We're not gonna be pumping the brakes. So we're gonna be putting the, the vacuum line straight on the bleeder, cracking the bleeder in that method. So we shouldn't be bubbling it up. I do want to say though that, what was I going to say? I don't know, I'll tell you in a minute. Oh yeah, I remembered what I was going to say. Uh, while you're doing this, make sure you check, keep checking the fluid levels. Because if you suck air into your line, once you get started, Hey, you got to do it all over again. <laughs> and I tell you, once you get down to the very last one and it starts sucking air, you saying, man, I, I ain't getting, ain't getting no solid fluid going through there. You just suck some air. All right, let me crawl up underneath here. Ah. Ow. All right, so I got it hooked up. Got my wrench hooked on. I got my clear line hooked on. Got my vacuum gauge hooked up. So what we're gonna do now is, and I got my uh, stuff set up. There's a hose in here and the vacuum line, the vest vacuum line, because you don't want, whatever you do, you don't want the fluid to get inside here. Fluid inside here is bad, this is for, making air vacuum, not fluid vacuum. So let's, let's suck it. Oops, I hit the button. All right, so we're at 15 pounds of vacuum. Let's get it up to 20 and give it a crack. I can actually hear hear stuff happening. All right, we tighten it back up. I'll check the fluid level.
No fluid yet. All right, I'm gonna go check the level. I'll be right back. Okay, so it used about half the rear reservoir on the system. So that means it's pulling through and I, I heard it. So let's do this and keep going. We'll get about three pumps and check it. Now remember on this system here, we got a brake cylinder here and a brake cylinder up there. It's got to fill a quarter inch line, not a 3 16 line, a quarter inch line all the way to here. Now this is the farthest part of the system. Top it off. That was four pumps, I think. <clears throat> All right, again, we used about half of the rear cylinder. We should be getting brake fluid here soon. I just double checked all my connections and oh, they're all okay. I think we're just having a simple fact that fluid pulls harder than air. And the more fluid we get in the line, uh, the more resistance we're having. Therefore, the air sucks out faster easier less resistance uh, the Borg says resistance is futile oh yeah my new wheels are coming I should be here in a couple days
right, it didn't use any fluid, but we're moving. So I checked the bleeder on the other side, and it wasn't that it was loose, it just wasn't tight. And so, if fluid gets up to the, the center, little block up there, it'd rather suck the air from the other bleeder than from the oil through the line. Maybe I was sucking air through that other bleeder. I mean, I do, I did have seen spurts of brake fluid on it one time. Fluid in the cup now. Still a lot of air. over on the other side and this bleeder valve over here still wasn't all the way tight uh, so I may have been sucking air from this bleeder valve over to the other one and I, I can hear fluid now when I when I get it cranked and it's pulling vacuum better and listen I don't know if you can hear that. That's fluid moving. And I already have fluid up in the up in the line. I think the problem was was this one over here. Get this one bled. It would have been easier if I left the tires off. Daddy loves you, okay? Would you guys stay right there? Okay, that's a, that's a good spot for you. All right, so I found a couple issues. And one of them is the master cylinder had a leak on the pipe went through here to the back. I got that sealed up. And then I got to put a little bit of thread tape around 
this thing so it's not sucking air when I'm trying to vacuum it. So we're just gonna put a little bit of tape on it. And it's gravity, it's gravity bleeding now. It wasn't doing that before. Just put a little bit of tape on there. And that way the air is not sucking through here. Because the air is gonna take the vacuum is gonna take the least resistant flow. And if it can squeeze by the the thing in my jig, and that's what's gonna do. Uh, it's probably bled now. She leaking like a sip. I hope somebody used the right size wrench. We're gonna test it real quick. So we got we got uh, fluid all the way back now. And I've spent an hour trying to figure out why wasn't it pulling the fluid through. And it was had a, <laughs> a leak at the <laughs> at the rear line on the master cylinder. A couple hours. one now may have to put tape on this one too Make sure I 
fluids are topped off. All right, the brakes are adjusted. Let's see how much fluid we used on the on this passenger side. Plus, I topped it off once already. Topped off. Now we gotta check for brake pressure. Alright, let's go in here and check for some brake pressure. We should have brake pressure now. I mean, I didn't see no more bubbles coming out. That doesn't mean there ain't some inside the line somewhere. But what we'll do, I mean, it it shouldn't be spongy, but it should sink because the rear brakes are not adjusted yet but we still should have some brake pressure oh yeah <clears throat> yeah doesn't go to the floor Next is to get that uh, valve put on there. Get my vacuum on there. Plus, we got to check for leaks. Now that I pumped the brakes up a few times, it'll show our our leaks if we got any. Let's look at the master cylinder. It was leaking underneath the one right there. Looks dry now. I think, yeah, it looks dry. And the front one on on the left side was leaking and it's dry now too. So we're good. All right, Marshall PC Wallbash is here. I'm gonna stop on the Mihal truck and see what we can do on his truck. I'm gonna have to back you up here a second. Good. So Mr. Wallbash brought his uh there we go. See where I broke that one. Oh yeah. I was reading them up or PB blasted. Yeah. Alright, we'll see what we can do. 
Maybe we can get it a little higher. Steady. What size you say it was? 12 millimeter. Huh? Mm. I got this metric. There goes Mr. PC Wabash. Got his truck fixed up so he can go on all his uh, adventures that he does. He probably make it now. All right, Mr. Wabash.
All right, that's gonna be it for this episode of Fixing Things. Got the brakes bled. That's a big plus. Uh, I would I would have drove it. I would have drove it today, but uh, <laughs> without that uh, vacuum booster on there, it'd be a big giant vacuum leak. Uh, and it don't have that much brakes on it right now. I got to get those back brakes bl uh, adjusted. So right now the they'll hit hard and they'll slow slowly go to the floor. It won't go all the way to the floor, but it's not right. <laughs> There's, I didn't want them going on hard, so I left the slack adjusters loose on them. So next week we're gonna get those slack adjusters, get that hose put on the front, probably put the brakes on the view, and on Nancy's car, I think she's got some brakes. We're probably gonna do the brakes on that too. Uh, so we got a lot of stuff to do. But the Mihal truck is 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 getting ready. It's getting ready. She's awesome. Daily driver. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Remember to like and subscribe if you like my videos. I appreciate it. Um, I put a lot of time and effort into it. Uh, even if it seems like it's kind of cheesy. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of cheesy. <laughs> God bless each and every one of you. I'll see you on the next episode of Fixing Things with Pastor Bill. I'm ecstatic. <laughs>